Uh, okay, so thank you all for uh, watching this presentation. I, thanks for bringing up this uh, microconference. I think it's a very good idea uh, to get everybody together to discuss this stuff. I'm very interested on that. Uh, <clears throat> quite nice talk so far. Um, and, and my name is Guilherme, right? I work at Igalia, which is a cooperative that works mostly in free software, open source, with an upstream first approach. And I've been working with the Steam Deck lately. Uh, in the past, I've worked in different stuff like RPC or in a sustaining engineering team like Steven, but in Canonical, dealing with customer stuff. So I've been always working with KW and debugging stuff from, from customers and whatnot. So, uh, and here we are going to talk about when KW is maybe not the best fit is to have you, right? Uh, okay, the mouse here. So the summary is the, it all starts with the, the Steam Deck console that I'll present more uh, soon, which is a game console and has a distro based on Arch Linux. And we started to consider how to collect logs in case such system breaks like a panic. Uh, and we have some infrastructure for that, right? Uh, KDump is the most standard one. Most of you, or if not all, know that. But FilmCorp might be not the best fit here. And what alternatives do we have, right? I think uh, one of the good ones that we end up choosing is PStore. It's a lightweight mechanism. And uh, it's, it's good in some aspects, but also has limitations. So we can discuss a bit how to improve these or some ways of mitigate that. Uh, starting with the beginning of the thing, the Steam Deck. I guess some of you, if not all, know the, this new console from Valve. It's in the media. A lot of people talking about this. This picture is of my deck. It's not great, sorry. I took the picture myself. I'm not really good at that. Uh, and it's a powerful computer. It's a console, a game console, but in the end, it's a, it's a computer for computer. Uh, eight threads, AD, custom APU, uh, 16 gig of RAM, uh, three models of uh, storage, and this slide is now outdated because <laughs> in this weekend that there was a release of an improved version called the Steam uh, Deck OLED with more storage, I guess, one terabyte extra battery, and of course a, a different screen. And uh, with the with the Steam Deck, of course, we have uh, it runs Linux, and one of the best things, in my opinion, about this is the the ecosystem, which is full of open source. This is the goal. And the distro it runs is called SteamOS, which is basically a version of Arch Linux with some extra package and sauce on top of it. It has a game mode, which is a, a compositor called Gamescope, very, very nice. And you can use it as a desktop, KDE Plasma. And it has a complex software stack to run games, like uh, Proton, which is a wine thing, uh, and DirectX to Vulkan layers to allow running Windows games on Linux. So uh, what happens if such stack crashes? Like, uh, would be nice to, to get logs to help to debug this, right? And what about kernel panics? Though they are rare, they should be rare, we should uh, maybe take some action, collect data would be nice, right? Arch Linux itself has no official tool for, for that. There is a very good wiki, as most of the Arch wiki, um, explaining how to set up data manually in manual steps and whatnot. But, that's it. There is no, <clears throat> as far as I know, at least there is no official key done to. Uh, so we start to, to consider what logs we should collect in case of a panic happens. We can collect uh, Vimcore, as we discussed a bunch of, right, already in this micro conference about Vimcores, but we also can collect the message or some extra information from the user land process to help debugging problem issues if that was the trigger of the panic, for example. The thing with Steam Core is that it might be a bit too much. It, it, the, the problems are it's it's heavy on, on storage, might be some hundreds of megabytes. It's a bit difficult to share. Imagine we want to share this information with the vendor, with Val. So everybody's sending Steam Cores. Uh, it's maybe too much. So uh, maybe the message is enough with some extra information if possible. And there is the statistics factor. Imagine we have a bunch of uh, Steam Deck consoles running worldwide and some panic here and there, they send the, the data, the message to, to the Valve server, Sentry or something like that. Uh, with that, you could correlate and see what the code traces are more common, what is the, the common cause of the most uh, issues. And that's very helpful, I guess. 
So we want to rely on uh, internal infrastructure for that, for collecting the logs. So what tools do we have right uh, for this? The first one, which is, I, I'm going briefly because most of you know probably, is the, the GitHub, right? So GitHub is the KXF based solution in which we pre, uh, reload a kernel in a reserved area. And when we have a pen, we, we jump to this new kernel ASAP uh, to collect the memory of the, the broken kernel <clears throat> using the tool, for example, make them file. So you put there the small distro and collect the log. The theme core that is collected uh, is usually compressed, the strip, you can remove the, the free pages and, and user space pages. Uh, so it's reduced. It. Uh, it's very useful for post mortem analysis uh, and share with uh, support teams like the sustaining team. It's very rich data collection. You have everything there, right? The current memory is there. But uh, it's not always suitable. The main concern for uh, desktops or, or this index, our specific case, is the pre reserved memory. Uh, it's more and more lately, uh, like uh, the orders of 200 megabytes to make the kernel boot and with all the tooling necessary to collect. So it's reserved on boot. We can't adjust that <clears throat> without the boot. There was a bunch of discussions already about this, but it's very tough and some people are very uh, against that, adjusting that after the reboot. So it's difficult to estimate as well. There is a link here. I tried to work in an estimator some time ago when I was working the sustaining uh, engineering in Canonical. Uh, to help the customers and with some heuristics, but it's very difficult to, to properly estimate. It's, it's okay, but not super accurate. And another big issue is uh, regarding the deck and desktops is the size of the core and the privacy about this. Uh, it's a bunch of data there, right? You have the current structures. You can even probably infer some passwords by navigating that. Some users wouldn't like to, to share this, I guess, right? Uh, and there are risks. KDump is a bit risky in the boot process, especially if we don't have much control of the hardware. PCI devices might be in a state that they does not work properly in the KDump boot, right? We don't have a standard reset mechanism, especially in x86. This link here in the potential nightmares about the discussion we had in the past about this case uh, of uh, stuck device that was preventing uh, And we also might have problems uh, exactly in the point of collecting the new core, all out of memory, if we don't properly preserve the amount necessary uh, in the crash kernel parameter, and also make the file incompatibilities with the current version. We need to keep track of that. That was common in Ubuntu, for example. To have, uh, make the file that was a bit older and the kernel got updated, and then it was a uh, problem while collecting the main type of right? so, um, so we start to visit these alternatives. We have hypervisor mechanisms, but they are hypervisor mechanisms, right? So for virtualization, which is not our case, like FADAM for PC, GMU, uh, this tooling, uh, SADAM was mentioned uh, in the presentation today. We have net console, zero console stuff, but this is too much invasive. It's, it's for developers that set up the consoles and we can collect data while the bank happens and see that or save the consoles using the terminal plan. But then we have PSTOR. PSTOR is technological persistent storage. It's a bank time data collection and it's a very flexible one. So let's talk a bit more about PSTOR. I consider it a lightweight mechanism. It happens exactly when the bank happens. It collects data into a backend and then the machine reboots. You don't need to start a new kernel. Uh, it has a bunch of backends like the RAM, which is called RAM Oops. So you save in a portion of RAM and the next kernel can pick it up. Uh, you have UFI backend, so you save it as a viral in UFI. You can use the CPI ERC table or even a block device. So can I ever play with this? It's kind of a new block device for uh, some years. Uh, and it's very common in embedded devices. If you check some ARM, ARM uh, or it's, they have in device trees entries for RAM Oops. So it's a standard there. Also, in Chromebooks and the Stimac, which I, we're going to talk about. It's fast, hopefully transparent process and does not require, require KZX support, which is a bonus in systems that have kind of a lot of firmwares. I noticed that in some ARM boards that can uh, KZX because the firmware does not allow it, it breaks it, some security assumption. 
but it has some cons, of course. It's a trade-off. So uh, one another advantage is some pros here. Uh, it has many front ends. You can use it not only for bank. You can use it for trades, collecting the functions, uh, the tracing log, or on software user space messaging. You can have like you can hook some. It's called key message the front end. And some some user space to like Proton could could write some stuff that could be collected after break. It does not require memory reservation, which is a big pro for us, right? The, the UFI backend zero uh, because it's, it's UFI removes. It requires some portion of the memory, of course, because we're gonna write there, but it's usually very small, like one megabyte, two megabytes. The cons, the main one, you you are not collecting a full Vim core, right? So you lose a bunch of data. And it runs after bandwidth fires. We are going to discuss this a bit about one of the challenges of uh, this approach. Also, there is a tooling to configure the store. As far as I know, maybe there is, I don't know, there is an elementary tool that's called system store that saves a log that appears in CFS, uh, saves to a folder, but um, we don't have ways to set that. It only works if the store is already set, like a cute common line, I don't know. So we work in a tool called KDumpst. KDumpst is a tool that includes pStore and uh, methods of uh, data collection for Arch Linux. It's available in the Arch user stories. Uh, it supports Grub and, and some in systems. It includes import, but it defaults to pStore. It, sorry, it includes KDump collect collection, but it defaults to pStore. And it uses removes. This is interesting because in this thing deck, uh, we have a, like we have some portion of the memory around 15 megabytes for free. It's it's not used by the kernel. Uh, there's some alignment code in X86 architecture that keeps it as a rim buffer and use it. So I go to that and say, okay, let's try, right? So I wrote the log there, but the log is there. The firmware, we have control of the firmware. It does not reset the memory. So we are using by default uh, the removes backend, but we have plans to support UFI because it's quite useful in some cases and other bootloaders. It's default, it's in deck now. Uh, it's able to though uh, uh, another tool does that submission. We communicate with this other tool, right? But then the question remains, how, what can we improve in the local action? Because the message is enough. I mean, well, can we get more information? And the answer is yes, we can use it. I found that parameter at the bank print, which allows us to write some stuff like task states and uh, the scheduler states, uh, memory information, CPU backtraces, which is quite useful for uh, debugging race conditions that one CPU is locking on or stuff like that, uh, locks, timers. The thing is, bank print prints a bunch of stuff in the buffer in the bank time. So there is the risk that it's kind of getting mitigated more and more with that talk work on the print case high. Um, and pen uh, print and the whole story infrastructure runs after the pen with fires, right? So let's talk a bit about pen with fires, which is a thing here. Um, Not fire callbacks are structured in the kernel, a list of functions that can be executed in any order, right? You have multiple types, atomic one, block one. The paint with fires is an atomic list of callbacks that is executed during the paint time. And basically, any driver, any entity, even out of three drivers, can register with fires there to do anything during the paint time. So, naturally, it's risky for KDUMP and even for PSTOR uh, if KDUMP runs before that, by default, KDUMP runs after the bank. By default, KDUMP runs before the, the, the bank with fires. So it's not a risk. But the thing is, some bank with fires are necessary. We have a case in Hyper-V, for example. Hyper-V has a fire that's necessary to unload some VM bus connection, they call. If that does not happen, KZAC fails and the VM is broken, right? So the solution that was found some years ago was a perimeter. Crash case like postal fires to run the uh, fires before you know, invert the order. And we are addressing uh, this risk or trying to uh, by the factor. There is a presentation in the rest in the link. Uh, we, we are trying to reorder and better uh, kind of limitate the, the, the 
how the benefit files run. The necessary ones could run first, but the others could be really optional, right? Uh, and uh, with that, we came to the most important part, the challenges, the ideas, the discussions we can have here, right? So this store is a bit risky, some consider that because of some reasons, like it runs in bad time, opposed for KW, which is a, is a new kernel, right? The, I would say the risk is variable, it depends a bit on the backend, for example, for run backend, we have uh, the risk of the firmware breaking or, or corrupting the RAM memory, uh, retraining the memory, right? And for the file, don't have this risk. Uh, regarding specifically this backend that we are using, the RAM Oops one, um, some limitations we are finding with this is that it's not easy to reserve the memory. Uh, it requires, for example, use the MEM parameter. Uh, there is no removes reserve memory, and we need to, to, to pass the, exactly the address of this of the, to the driver, the removes driver, the address of this memory. So I would like to, to have a parameter. It's one of the ideas to make it easier on the users to, to reserve memory. Also, we have the risk of firmware corrupting, of course, and retraining memory. So uh, it would be nice to have a test case for, for removes, an easy one without inducing a panic. Maybe it's right and variable and see if the firmware is doing that. My, my limited experience shows it's not common to the firmware to retrain the memory in all boots, maybe in firmware updates or for servers. But for the desktops, which is most of our use case, and they seen that, I know that uh, it does not retrain the memory, so it's safe to use this. Another risks we have is the panic not fires uh, that we are trying to address on the refactor to mitigate that a bit. And, and finally, uh, oh, panic print, is, is panic print enough? I mean, uh, it, it's been enough, it's a bunch of data, but is there any other data that could be collected on panic time, some structure information or anything that could be more helpful for the but if we only have the message. Uh, so it's open for discussion. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the presentation. Appreciate your attention. And that's Thank you. I guess I have a couple questions. Um, also, for everyone here, if you're asking questions, I've been told, please stand up so that the camera can uh, get your pretty face. Um, but anyhow, uh, or in my case, my face. Um, so I did want to ask um, about you the risk for uh, the panic print um, no, uh, functions that you're calling right now. Um, have you have you encountered, you know, interesting issues with, say, uh, you know, corrupted or, or 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 taken locks, you know, in the panic print? How do you handle the idea of that? Do you have, I guess, when when panic happens, you kill the uh, running CPUs, and it might be holding all sorts of locks, all sorts of data. And I guess, and, and I know you have to be very careful in the panic function notifiers that's where the risk comes from for a lot of these notifiers as well that a lot of them aren't necessarily written expecting that they're going to not be able to get their locks so do you do you have to deal with that how do you mitigate that risk in panic print interesting uh thanks for the question i the thing is i've instrumented because the story is running after uh the, the crash the, the fires by default there's no other way I, I've instrumented that. Uh, how, how many of fires are running in the DAC or other uh, basic uh, environment like x86, not a server, right? And it's really a few of them, but the risk is real uh, because people that write with fires, they not always take the care, the, the, the amount of uh, care with the locks, as you said. So part of the, the, the refactor, the refactor could be split in two parts. One is what I mentioned, that we want to reorder stuff and see what is really necessary notifiers to run before, uh, etc. But the first part was a bit simple. We tried to go to all the notifiers in the kernel, that uh, all the notifiers that exist, and check the code and see if they are doing risk stuff. And a bunch of them were doing risk stuff, like taking the locks. So we changed that for, for example, they spin a tri lock, the tri lock alternatives in Texas. So now uh, what happens if, when we change a notifier like this is if it tries to, to grab the lock and the lock was taken, it fails. It does not run the notifier, right? Uh, so 
In the field, I, I'm not aware of those issues in this deck. In my test, I could not uh, face any of those issues, but we are aware that they exist, at least in theory, and try to address them proactively by uh, changing the notifiers. Not sure, sure. It makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that, that covered it. Yeah, so I'm Grant Grandler. I work on the Chrome OS, and so thank you for calling out the fact that we use PStore because that's actually a valuable tool for us to help track down issues that customers are reporting and including noting that there's a lot of privacy issues around that. We don't just send the PStore dump straight to Google. It gets filtered, and people have to approve that they send it. My question is about what you asked the very last at the end. What data could you add to a dump, a PStore dump, that would make it more useful? And this, this revolves around the fact that there's sort of two kinds of crashes that happen inside the kernel. One of them is a precise crash where you have like a data page fault, page zero reference or something like that. You know what the address is, you know what the stack trace is, you know what happened. It's the imprecise crashes that suck rock hard, right? They, you don't have the actual context of what crashed, but you have the, or that caused the crash, but you have the aftermath of like a hung cast detector coming in and telling you, oh yeah, 120 seconds ago, your, your system got wedged on something and hasn't moved any forward, so we're gonna crash now. Um, if someone smarter than me, I hope, uh, can figure out how to unravel the dependencies between the hung task and what it was involved in, what context it was involved in, adding that to the P store would be valuable, right? because that's what's starting to collect in some of the Chrome OS crash dumps that I've seen or looked at in systems. Over time, these hung tasks become a bigger and bigger portion because they're harder to solve. So if somebody has good ideas on that, I, I think that would be a good addition. Thank you. This is uh, just my take on this. I'm not, a, I cannot say as a full expert on this, but I had problems with hung tasks in the past as well. They are difficult to debug exactly because for the reason you said. Uh, and one thing that helped me, and we are including that in the Steam Deck, is the CPU backtraces and the tests. Because you have all CPU backtraces, you can see what were they doing right in that moment. And um, we have all the tests printed, you can see the status of the task. So at least it might hint you that a task was stuck, even if it's not present in the CPU backtrace at this at specific moment of the crash. If there was a test that was in the state, you can probably consider that mm, it, it, it's a hint, right? So at least it might help. It's not the definitive answer, but it's a, a, an extra information that might help in this case specifically. Not sure if you agree with that or not. Yeah, so we've done, welcome to a lot of random analysis. Um, so yeah, we, we take a look at a lot of hung tasks. That's pretty, a lot of, things that we debug. Um, looking at the task stack, uh, the task stack for the task that was hung is, is usually what we do. Um, I think there's an echo option in the, um, I always forget that proc, uh, Magic SRQ. Magic SRQ, thank you. Um, that'll dump all the task stacks. Um, usually we can use that. Um, when we get a full RAM dump, what we'll do is we'll just look at all the stacks for every every task. So I, I don't know if we put in a D message, uh, it floods D message quite a bit. Um, in fact, you might miss uh, some of the tasks that, or the initial messages of like what went wrong because you've dumped so much in a D message. Um, so actually the next talk is what I'm gonna give and we talk a little bit about what we wanna collect uh, in, what we, we call it mini dump, but um, we're trying to see how, how it'll fit. I don't wanna uh, jump the gun too much, but yeah, I just wanna say the, this SRQ is something that's helpful for us. Yeah, yeah. I just wanna point out that the hung task itself is the victim of something else that went wrong. It's not right. a cause, right? right. Yeah, so usually, yeah. So what we do is we'll, we'll look at the stack and then we'll figure out who's holding the lock and yeah. yeah so, uh, one, one idea here, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, uh, okay. so one idea here is uh, when, you're, when you're doing this on a VM core, you're probably starting out with, uh, with a theory you have and then you go try your next theory and then you go try your next theory. Um, so what if you're, panic print was pluggable with BPF or something, and you could plug in a BPF program that lets you print out whatever you want. So the first time you see a crash from that gets reported to you from the field, you have no idea, you just see there's a hung task. So then what if you could deploy a BPF program to some subset of, of Steam decks or all of them or whatever that says, okay, next time that we have a crash, let's print out this piece of information. 
and it'll be a very long debug cycle, but eventually you'll be able to get to the root cause, right? Um, so backing up, the more generic idea is like plugging in BPF programs to panic print. The, the caveat being like hopefully BPF is in a good enough state at the time of the crash that, that it'll work. But uh, as long as you like verified it ahead of time, like it, it, uh, the B BPF guarantees should hopefully be enough that like it's not going to wedge your machine going down in the crash like a panic notifier might. This is a great idea, a very good idea. Thank you. And I think you said uh, it might be a very long debug uh, cycle, right? But if you factor the amount of devices worldwide, and multiple users face that if it's a crash that is kind of recurrent to some of them, and we have control, we not precisely uh, me, but Valve has control of the software stack, so uh, they can deploy that in all X. So I guess it may speed up the process because uh, it's not the same user that needs to reproduce that. Other users will produce, and, and then we can cycle that. It's a very good idea. And to the point of CSRQ that uh, it was mentioned here, what they print uh, pr prints in the message stick is exactly the same as the CSRQ. So it's the same function that is called. That's really big dump of information about the tests. To avoid uh, rotating the log, we increase the log by log buff. Uh, log of something that parameter right that increase for four megabytes. Since we have 15 megabytes of free memory in the deck, four megabytes is nothing, so that helps to not uh, lose data. Anyone else? We are, yeah, we've got one minute here, so that's probably a good, uh, a good time to stop if nothing else. All right. Thank you so much. This is a great talk. Yeah. Thanks, guys.